in this one. Now the flies we use for grayling are very similar to I brought my New Zealand fly box over. Um, there'll be a lot of like duns and also like caddis and that around. So we'll tend to use uh, like a lot of stimulators um, and also just some elk hair caddis, you know, in blacks and browns and things like that. And they'll work really well here. So uh, you have a selection that you'd normally use for trout and they're going to work on the grayling as well as the rainbows that are all through here. What do you got? Uh, I don't know, two early to call. Uh, Dolly Varden, you reckon? Haven't caught one of them yet. Might be a Dolly Varden, might be a Grayling, might be a Rainbow. Yeah, a good solid little fish. Beautiful. Make it sick nice. of them on the dry. No, it's good. I mean, we've been hitting the uh, Charmin Kings in, in early in the morning and sun's out now, so a bit of a hatch. It's been uh, well worth uh, the effort actually. Beautiful fish. Beautiful, yeah. Lovely spots on that, just on the side too. Nice part marks. Yeah. Nice little grayling. Gee, they come up and smack that dry fly. They're a good little bread and butter fish if you just want to have some fun. Right on cue. Over comes the guide. We'll bring him in. <laughs> Got the three spots yeah. right in the back, Straight on the aren't they? Aren't they just a good little fish? Now the setup we've got, um, it's a normal like our trout rod, what we use in New Zealand, a nice stalker six weight, um, and we've got like a hook, and then we've also got a uh, like a bead about um, four or five inches away from, from the hook. So the fish will put that in his mouth, and then you uh, set the hook, and uh, it'll, it'll quite often hook on the outside of the mouth as well. And that just helps in catch and release to protect a lot of fish. If we use a normal glow bug, which we'd normally use at home in New Zealand, they'll swallow it all the way down and you have a lot of um, uh, fish kills there. We need this to sink because this is just a plastic bead. So we've got like a, um, a split shot, you know, a few inches up above. So that'll get that dragging and then that egg fly uh, will bounce along near the bottom and hopefully the fish will take it. We've also got an indicator, which everyone would, would know of using for, um, for trout. And in Australia, we might even have two flies, you know, one a, like a dry fly and, and, a, and a wet fly. But here on the Algonac, you only allowed one fly. So this is what they call a thingamabobby. And uh, it's obviously like a little balloon made of plastic, doesn't absorb water and floats really well. So uh, we'll cast that out, drift it down, and hopefully that'll go under and it'll show us that there's a fish underneath it. Now, when the salmon start spawning, the trout, Dolly Varden, grayling and all that will literally sit behind them. And as the eggs come out, they'll sit there and gulp them up. So it's a, an outstanding food source and they uh, they certainly love it. Because usually what it is, is it, they, they suck they, it in they, or something. Yeah, they, they hit it and spit it right back out. It's a little one, same probably again. So the other name for them is, is Arctic char. Oh, they're, right. they're actually, this, they're, I don't know why they call them two different fish. Basically one of them runs to the ocean and the other one doesn't. Yeah. Dolly Barton. <laughs> not Dolly Barton. Yeah. The Trophy Adventures Lodge is obviously right on the water and you, you don't have to travel too far at all to get stuck into the fish. There'll be salmon that'll scream up past this all the time. Plus, there's a constant supply of um, the rainbows and grayling that you can literally catch right on your doorstep. Right off the end of the runway. <laughs> it's like good. a carrier landing. Yeah, that sounds good, Tom.